feel terrible <laughs> if you answer that question. <laughs> This we, guy looks like he's in the manga. That has been said as a compliment. Never. Yeah. We're going to get... Okay, we're already going to set some people off. There's, this this, we this are guy, friends this with guy people. looks like he's in the manga. Yeah. Is something that you say oh, to man. people when you're trying to say, <laughs> That's right. you have not had sex before, have you? <laughs> no, it's... Yeah. Like, Yo, you, never, you get wet? You in the manga? Yeah, Hell no. It's never like, man, I love that guy's style. I bet he's in the manga. Well, Speaking of manga. I didn't realize... I was in the manga. Let, hey, let's right. let's talk about this. Did you know that uh, manga, anime, and stuff like that is getting th- th- like thrushed, thrushed? Is that the right word? Is rushed, thrushed, rushed, yeah, just yeah. rushed, flushed into popular culture like crazy right now because there are a ton of rappers and hip hop artists that are. Uh, Frank Ocean. Uh, says you're a natural blondie like Goku in one of his singles, and it's amazing. Goku's wow. not a natural blonde. So right. that, that quote is That's incorrect. Trash. That could be that could be the cleverness of it though. You're a natural blonde like Goku, meaning your oh. hair has died. Frank oh. Ocean is Ooh. much Damn smarter it. than you. Wow. Are, so. Damn it. Frank uh, again with the win. Also Adidas coming out with an entire line of uh, Dragon Ball Z collaboration. It'll be just like those really cool shirts like in 2005 that oh had Goku God. on them. That Brando, <laughs> you want to... Real talk right now? Yeah. I think Baker and I both had one of those. <laughs> we used to draw Dragon Ball Z. And yeah. I think you probably made fun of us. Oh, I'm sure I did. Me and my cousin used to get together. We would have... I don't know where you'd get it from, like his parents' work or something. And his parents, I guess they're my aunt and uncle. So anyway, my aunt and uncle would supply this roll of like tracing paper. Yeah. And we'd print out. We you remember Geo Cities, like the shitty website hosting yeah. company. <laughs> you, we'd go to Geo Cities, type in Dragon Ball Z art or Vegeta art or Super Saiyan yeah. Vegeta. Print out all of these pictures. Yeah. It waste a ton of copy paper and uh, put it underneath the 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 tracer. That way we could just draw our, our own. Right. Tell your story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What we can't compare no, Dragon was, Ball Z fans. Well, I stopped listening to you halfway through. The, I was you had check shirts. The you had shirts. I had tracing paper. I was looked like like I would always talk trash on on Dragon Ball Z, but then I'd run home and, and like turn it. on Toonami. Toonami like, freak was the out. shit, dude. Toonami yeah. was awesome. So I tried to get back into watching anime for a minute, and uh, I watched what's that one Attack on Titan? Yeah, which is fantastic. Oh, I it's think, great. I think it's really cool. So you are in a manga. Uh, I don't want to talk about this on the podcast. <laughs> you can just address it. You're married with kids. Life is that's right. complete. You're, you're good uh, to go. That's right. Yeah. So I say kids. I meant kid. Yeah. But My kid loves uh, Attack on Titan. Somebody else said that you had kids the other day. Yeah, you Kevin catch Marks. <laughs> he was How like, he well, know? I know you have kids. I'm like, I have kids, you punk. <laughs> Kevin Marks is you don't an know enigma. Me. Yeah, he is. Stop posting so much on our Facebook group. He's such an... For, I, I'm jealous of him because he knows so much about a lot of things that I wish I knew yeah. about, yeah. and he does nothing with it. It's so frustrating. No, he, he does everything with it because he goes into the no, he Facebook goes, group. He goes into our comment section. I'm talking about, I want I want to see a YouTube channel. I want to see yeah, he's great. a blog of some kind. What if his he, voice sounds just terrible? It's possible. I have no idea what he sounds <laughs> like. He talks possible. like this. We were yeah. talking uh, before you got here, that. and Brando, I haven't seen Brando in years. I, I haven't seen you in a decade. So, maybe. yeah. Seriously. Has it been that long? Yeah, probably. So the last show that we would have played, which is where I would have seen you last. Right. Uh, was, was Talking to the microphone. You're being like Kayla right now. The Revival Sound was what? 2000? The, the last time nine? I remember seeing the Revival Sound was... Am I allowed to speak freely? Sure. This is the last time... Or the last time was at uh, Cosmic Charlie's when two of your band members got into a fist fight outside. That wasn't the Revival That wasn't sound. the Revival Let's Sound. Oh, that's home. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I was gone. That's right. Oh, I, I so just, decades. <laughs> that's how well that all yeah. just plays was, was that Take Me Home or Decades? <laughs> that was Take Me Home. It was Take okay. Me Home. I, yeah. We did one show with now. Decades and then right. I moved away. That's right. So, so then, I, so then I, I truly don't remember, I guess. Yeah, it would have been. So I think the Revival Sound was 2007 to 2008 or nine. And then 2009, I moved to Atlanta. Okay. With the rest of Marvel. And That's right. Yeah, Marvel Studios. Kevin Feige. So, I guess we house. just need to do somewhat of an introduction. Uh, yeah, we're, we're doing an after party because we wanted to take advantage of uh, Brando being here in town. Because you don't live in Atlanta anymore. You live in Illinois, correct? No, I live in St. Louis. St. Louis, Missouri, yeah. excuse me. 
And uh, so, yeah, he's in town, and we haven't seen him, like we said, in years. And we wanted to take this opportunity to just do an after party. Um, if you're new to the show, an after party is just sort of a, fr- a free form type of episode. We're going to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Uh, I can already guess we're going to talk a lot about um, our history with local music and the local music scene and stuff. But uh, and pop culture stuff naturally gets woven into it. But it's it's more of a a free show. And uh, yeah, so Brando, we've known Brando for a long time. We've known you, and uh, it, it's it's crazy. It's a, it's odd to me that you even listen to Sight and Sound. I don't know why. So I'm a completionist. So I've right. heard every Sight and Sound weekly at least. Okay, there's That's a, a lot of content. you guys have ever done. That's right. So there was like always like movie shows or music shows that I would skip out on. I'd skip out if, if I knew I wasn't right. interested in it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But I used to be better about working out, you know, consistently, and that was I would tell myself, hey. No podcast unless you run your fat butt, you That's, know, yeah. around. So, well, I'm thankful. I'm I'm happy that you listen to our back catalog. But what's that like? Because what we do is so timely. Yeah, I would never do that. Like, <laughs> like, why do you give a shit when you hear our take months later about well, Donald a, Glover joining Lion King? Yeah, I have a kid, and so I'm not the most up on, and I work all the time. Yeah, so I'm not up on all the latest news, and I don't follow. You know, I watch, uh, like, I subscribe to a few podcasts, and I watch Cinefix, everything they do. Um, like, what's the difference? You yeah. Know, you know that YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, so that's, that's where I get, like, new music is from you. I remember before Sight and Sound, I would call you when you were doing uh, Film Beef, I would, uh, which is an old podcast that Ryan used to do. You know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway. They might uh, not know. Okay. So... I sent you a message on Facebook and basically was like, hey, <laughs> what do I watch? <laughs> like, I need I need some good entertainment. I what did I say? Do you remember? I would do that from time you, to time. You said, um, let's see, what did you say? You said, watch well, some show. You said to watch Daredevil season one. Made it five episodes. Um, Marvel TV shows. Okay, on all right. All right. To, to be fair, yeah. this was probably right when it came out. So you can do your... Your whoopee sure. cushion automatopoeia here <laughs> because we've had time to reflect. We've yeah. seen so much more. But Well, then you said to watch Cloverfield. The first viewing of Cloverfield was so good. The first the first one, the monster. Yeah. Okay. The first viewing of Cloverfield is great. It has no rewatchability for me. Interesting. Okay. Um, so the first time I watched it, I had a lot of fun. The shaky camera. Like, I've heard people complain about shaky camera in, like, The Office or Parks and Rec. Right. And they're just stupid. Yeah, that's, like, a fine. different thing. It, I wouldn't it, even it, consider it that. It, well, for one, when you compare, I don't know if you were just exaggerating there, but Cloverfield and Parks and Rec, it's completely different. Right. Correct. The, the aesthetic of it is completely different. So the people that, the general audience is confusing those two things, that's annoying. Right. Uh, but the other thing, too, I remember when Cloverfield was out, because, again, it was one of the first really big, popular found footage movies here in America, at least. And I remember notices at the movie theater. Viral marketing warning, campaign that was along with it. Warning people that they might get sick. Yeah. And I was like, that's so weird. Because that yeah. doesn't. I don't think that happens anymore. Because everyone is so used to just like 3D being a thing that like there's just no need for that type yeah, remember of warning that? anymore. Remember when 3D was a thing <laughs> yeah. for a minute? Yeah. I, I didn't I even know that Cloverfield was about a monster. Okay. Interesting. Like, when I, I saw, I remember seeing the marketing for it at a movie theater in your hometown back, back when I used to go to that movie theater. We say where he lives. We don't say where I live. <clears throat> it's in Frankfurt. I live in Frankfurt. It's the capital city. Gotcha. It's, yeah. it's fine. So, yeah, I remember <laughs> going there and seeing that, you know, a big cardboard cutout advertising the movie, and I didn't know what in the world it was. And then I saw from the makers of Lost, and I just didn't care. I didn't watch the last <laughs> I do not think that I like was that. in there. I like yeah. that. It was from one guy. Well, the well, guy. Yeah, the guy. The number one guy. <laughs> so d- my story with it, I don't remember what trailer, uh, or I'm sorry, I don't remember what movie the trailer premiered at, but I remember going to see a Transformers. movie. Transformers. Okay. I went and saw Transformers, I guess, sitting through the trailers, and all of a sudden you get this, essentially was a short film, was a trailer, this incredible short film, and people were like, what the fuck is this? Because all it had at the end of it was 81808.com. That's all it said. I remember, 11808. Whatever. Uh, so it's I go... It's crazy that you remember that. So I go... Well, I mean, 
I you, did you listen to my episode on Cloverfield? Uh, no. I'll give you a very shorter bridge version when he's done. I, I essentially spent more time going to that website on the lead up to this movie than I did probably watching the movie over the course of the years because there was so much marketing along with it. Like if you stayed on the website for a certain amount of time, you would hear the monster roar or the picture would change. And there, it was just a bunch of crazy shit, man. I was there. There's so much backstory to that movie. If you just pay attention to not that you should take that into consideration for how the movie is, because you shouldn't be expected to do that. But I, I, I will never forget my experience of that film and the excitement leading up to it. I was in high school, so this was like at the when I first started really getting into film, and I had plenty of time, like in the computer lab, and so all of uh, all of us in my film class would get together and we'd we'd research this one eighteen oh eight, the thing that we saw this trailer for, and no one knew what the fuck it was until the release. Like I don't even remember when they announced Cloverfield. Like they they could have, I might not have even known that that's what it was called until I walked into the theater. Like, I genuinely don't remember it ever being called Cloverfield until after I saw the film. That's just how I remembered it. I mean, it was one eighteen oh eight on IMDb, and just, it, it was crazy. And it's unlike anything that's been done, even still to yeah. this day, 10 years later. So the other show that you told me to watch was, you asked me if I had seen Lost. Yeah. And I hadn't, and so I watched them all. Yeah. And then I've since watched them all again. Yeah? And okay. then I tried to do it a third time, and... There was other what, things what's that experience like as a spiritual person? Because so I was so mad. You, you, you are the John Locke to my Jack Shepard here. This sure. is why, this is <laughs> this is why I'm curious. This is disgusting. Number one, I'm Hurley. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I know you can't see me, but I look just like Hurley. That's all you need to know. No, you, no, anyway, you don't. <laughs> anyway, self-deprecation uh, is not allowed on this podcast. Oh, it sure is. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, so I watched it, and I was, like, thinking, okay, this is Limbo. Like, Limbo is this weird kind of, I don't want to say Spoilers for a lot, if you haven't seen that. <laughs> oh, no, okay. no, no, Go this ahead. was a theory, okay. this was a yeah. very early theory. So, so my so first theory good. was, like, and I was so excited, was there's a kind of a Catholic idea about Limbo as a place in between heaven and hell, where you go after you die, and kind of like a purification period, or whatever. Some would call it purgatory. I, I love it. Yeah. So I oh, thought God. that was, I was excited because I was like, ooh, you know, I'm not Catholic, but I was, anytime you get some, you know, faith discussions going on on TV, I'm like, I'm for it. Oh, yeah? Especially. You if, like that? Well, I don't want to say all. Because there's like TBN and stuff. <laughs> I don't watch that. Right. It's trash. Lou, anyway. Do Lou Dobbins? <laughs> Lou Dobbins. Isn't he that guy on Fox News? <laughs> That's a, Lou Dobbs? Lou Dobbs. Oh, Dobbins. Yeah. Do Lou Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> 8 18 <08. laughs> So anyway, so I watched it and I was like, oh, dude, this is awesome. The first time I saw the ending, the last episode, I was like, I cannot believe I wasted all this time to get here. The shitty show. Uh, but then I was like, so I, th I was thinking about it for days. And so then I, I just immediately started rewatching yeah. it from the last season. And then I was like, well, I don't remember how we got there. So then I had to watch the whole thing again. So uh, it's a great show. So I knew that Ryan had hot takes and, and good ideas on shows. So that's why I reached out to you. And I, I, I knew about Film Beef, but I wasn't like an, an every episode listener. Yeah, I appreciate that. So then when I, uh, so I respected your opinion on music or on movies, and then I knew Jay, when you and Jay got together, I was like, oh, man, I know Jay. And Jay and my musical tastes are just, you know how uh, Jay always talks about the Ryan algorithm? Well, Jay has my algorithm, like, down. Yeah, I think I got it. Yeah. I think I got it. So, <laughs> Hey, you want to know a secret? Yeah. I have everyone's algorithm down. Nice. Come at me, Kevin Marks. I'll recommend you a, a The Fray album to listen to. Kevin Marks got me to get this. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Kevin Marks and Ralph Lenardic. Uh, but Kevin Marks got me on Comixology, which is, like, Fuck Amazon's yeah. comic thing. Yeah. And number one. Have you ever heard of Netflix? Yeah. <laughs> Comixology, your app is trash. You, I agree. It is why? So, no, hold on. Why? Why? It's so hard to navigate. Actually, I don't agree. I, I'm going to throw something out yeah. here. Listen, uh, the bees. That's what I call him. Uh, good buddy Jeff Bezos. He, bees. Uh, he he needs to step his game up in the uh, <laughs> in the user experience department. Everything that Amazon owns 
looks like trash. Amazon, it does. Amazon's, I think Amazon's website yes. is extremely confusing. 100%. They're, they just, it's because they have so much going on. I yeah. mean, that's what it is. They own everything. Uh, it, Comixology looks like it was made on GeoCities. It does. It, it looks like an does. Angel Fire website. Yeah, it it's does. trash. <laughs> it looks like doo-doo. So what's your what's your actual problem? Because the reason why I want to defend Comixology, like compare it to Marvel and Kevin Marks right now is like <gasps> I would, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would I would like to get He's his such take. a sweetie. I, I 30 think, posts on, yeah. on the page. The main reason why Comixology is well, at least the best app out there for e-reading comic books is they have the guided view, which to my knowledge, Marvel Unlimited still doesn't have. So you can just zoom in on the pl- panel and swiping through will go panel to panel as opposed to page to page. Sure. And when I had Marvel Unlimited, you just had the entire, uh, the entire page on your phone and that was really bothersome. So I don't know what Marvel Unlimited is either. So, it's, just, it's just Marvel's subscription. Sure, but this shows like how interested in comics I am. Okay. Right? Like I love <laughs> comic books in graphic novel form. Manga. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. I can't leave. I can't read right to left. It throws me off. Is that really how it is? I don't know. I've I'm not into that. Anyway, but I've never tried. it's right to left. Uh, up to down. No. <laughs> Dogs and cats. That's right. Anyway, so Comixology is trash because so I got on there and they're like, oh, free one week, uh, whatever their right. elite subscription is. You yeah. get it. You get everything. But then I was like, oh, sweet. So I can just go into anything and, and click on it. Not true. And that's trash. When I have Netflix, there's not a section of Netflix I can't click into. Well, but <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I it's all take, yeah. available. I can get anything I want. That's but right. that, that might change, though, because here's the problem. It's because Marvel, again, Marvel has their own uh, subscription service. So Marvel contractually doesn't want to allow that to happen. So what Brando's referring to is when you sign up to Comixology Unlimited, only a select amount of books apply to that. So if Brando wanted to, he might want to read The Dark Knight Returns, well, that might not be covered on Unlimited, so you, he would have to buy it anyway, is yeah. what he's saying. I own it. But it's... Same. So, like, the all the big titles that came out in graphic novels... Uh, Kevin's going to get so mad. All the the titles for basic people. I'm basic. <laughs> so when it comes to comics, like the big guys... Like your Chainsmoker fans. like the, the, <laughs> That's right, yeah. The Fall Out Boy fans. Yes. I'm basically like the Watchmen, V for Vendetta, and then Batman and, and Superman. Right. But, I think you're making a point, though, as far as I think Jay and I have talked a little bit about how the comics industry could improve because it's such a when you consider television and movies, it takes the least amount of time to read a comic book. That's right. So if there's anything that should have that kind of blanket subscription service, it should be comic books. But the the difficulty there, though, is so much work. Yeah, hard work that right. still goes into those books. So then, then you can get into talk to a conversation like, "What is their is their work actually worth ninety nine cents an issue?" And well, th- I I get that complaint, but yeah, I get, but it's again, it's it's the time allotted to this. It t- it could take me three minutes to it, finish. It a comic should book. be easier and more accessible to get into comic books. Yes, I I've told the story before, but. One day I was like, you know what? I kind of want to go to the comic book store, see if I can, you know, start getting some comic books. And the experience of uh, I've, Civil War II had just started, and the experience of trying to just figure out where to fucking start was yeah. such, it was so ass backwards. Uh, it's funny, I actually had no idea that you were as into comic books as you are, even on, okay, maybe you're not Kevin Marks level, but uh, right. he's not even my level. He's a Sith Lord. Yeah. I think Brando would like heroes on Collider, John Schnepp and. All those guys over there. We've talked before. I mean, uh, one of my favorite. Let's just sort of go off on a side tangent here. One Welcome of my, to After Schmo. I'm Ryan. <laughs> one of my one of my favorite things about Brando is I'm sort of going to use you to represent uh, a section of our listener base because a lot of our the people that follow along with us came over from After Schmo and Schmozo and Collider and stuff like that, and they're part of the movie community. And I, I absolutely love, I love every, everybody in the group, but I love people like you, like Brandon Turner, even like Eric uh, and, and Ryan Uchi and all those people. We don't really need Uchi. Let's be, but, let's be real. <laughs> but the, I like the people who aren't a part of that because I think it exposes people in, in the group who are a part of the movie community to what outside of the bubble sort of looks like. And that's fascinating for me. It's, it's really, really exciting for me to see that. 
Yeah, I think I'm a perfect example of your like everyday, maybe a little more deeper than everyday consumer of right. media. Right. Like I might be a little more hip on on music stuff than I am mm-hmm. anything else. But like I get excited when like I don't get ex- as excited as like, I don't know, Christina Farrow. I don't know. What what's her what's her Fox? Kinetic Fox. Kinetic, Kinetic Fox. Fox. Yeah. One of the best screen names on the internet. Oh, it's great. It's badass. But, but I don't like so she's a movie like when she sees a trailer or something she goes on the stardust app and like makes a review of it and stuff so that that's never going to be me right however i get stoked at stuff so when you guys talk about it i always go and check it out right um if i think it's for me right like i'm 100%. never gonna like there's nothing that luke jaggers or <laughs> any brad donovan can ever say about wrestling that's gonna oh, make okay. me go watch wrestling <laughs> it's not going for to some happen. reason for some reason i thought you were gonna say there's nothing I've I've decided that Luke Jaggers <laughs> has nothing about his taste that coincides with my no, taste. So I, anything that he suggests, I will just not like. I feel like, <laughs> man, if 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 Luke and I were the same age, yeah. then we would have been friends, oh, like really absolutely. good friends. We're friends now. I love you, Luke. Yeah, but Luke's, Luke's um, awesome. But like his music taste, I was just like, he's a girlfriend now, so he hasn't been communicating. <laughs> in I was the, like, in the Facebook. Group. I remember being. I get it. Not that I'm past. I'm just different. But I remember being in that scene and just being yeah. like. Oh, this hardcore band, they're going to change stuff. You We've know? talked about that before, yeah. you and I. I remember being, and I'm not trying to be like the whole like, oh, when I was your age, but I remember being Luke's age and being excited about the bands like, yeah. like you're talking about. And I would get so fucking annoyed about people like you and I. Right, who are like, exactly. This band is nothing. They're not doing anything new. Yeah. I'm Look that at guy your now. future, Luke Jackers. I'm that guy now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I miss getting excited about music. I just Same. I haven't gotten excited for music. When was the last time I got really stoked, like anticipating it? <laughs> One of my favorite things that's ever happened was uh, when Drake dropped More Life. Ryan wanted to be here for my reaction to hear yeah. it, yeah. and he was so disappointed because I literally just sat here. I thought it was gonna be like how I would react the first time I see a Star Wars. I don't trailer. turn yeah. up. I mean, I- I'm I'm looking for mistakes. Okay, I'm listening to Drake being like motherfucker better not slip i dare you <laughs> i dare you you were getting right so much hate on that that drake oh uh, i know yeah people are like al- they were like you didn't even listen to the bars man I know. <laughs> the bars yeah and guess what i pro- neither should anybody else with what drake says <laughs> he raps about three things he raps about uh women his mom and himself so yeah. it's just like yeah, yeah i good. think i think drake's fantastic but yeah um yeah so i get I get excited. So, Ryan, did you ever listen to uh, Manchester Orchestra drop this record? They're my they're my favorite active band. They 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 dropped this know. record called a Black Mile to the Surface, and it's it's brilliant. I I really enjoy Manchester Orchestra, but I go in and out of their songs, sure. so I I couldn't tell you my favorite album. Gotcha. Um, Jay <laughs> Jay and I play this game from time to time where. Yeah, I was testing out the algorithm that he supposedly has, right? So th- <laughs> this was like early on in Sight and Sound. Well, I do days. have it. I don't know why I have to and say supposedly. But. I said, I said, Jay, I said, I want you to guess my favorite Manchester Orchestra song based on the algorithm that you know, and I want you to tell me your top three choices. And he listed it's Virgin. He listed no. He listed, <sighs> I think, two of my three favorite Manchester Orchestra songs. And what songs. were they? I can't remember. Well, number one is I Can Barely Breathe. Great song. Yes. Love it. I don't remember the second one. <laughs> but he listed it. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite concert experiences I've ever uh, had in my entire life was Manchester Orchestra, Brand New, 21 Pilots, and Snoop Dogg. I would have loved that it show. It was incredible. I loved every second. Was he Snoop Lion then? I don't know. <laughs> All I remember is he had a giant inflatable dick on stage. And Hell it, yes. It made me so happy. Oh, yeah. It was one of those things where I was like, eh, I'll stay for a few songs, but I was having so much fun that I, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. But um, but no, that's good to know, too. I, I'm always fascinated with how people listen to our show. And I think that's that's sort of what we go for, I think, a little bit, is it's like you might not be into every single thing that we talk about, but hopefully we can have a discussion about it to where people might get interested in it. What, what do you do when you aren't interested in what we're talking about? Because... And I don't mean to give Jay shit, but like, there, obviously, there are so many times when he brings up a music topic oh, that I could so care hard. less about. Yeah, music's and, incredibly difficult. And he, it, it's it's funny because I feel like 
Uh, <laughs> I'm aware. I'm self-aware of the task at hand with music. I, I feel so bad because when we talk about movies, he's involved because yeah. he watches Collider. He's into all that stuff. He is more involved with movies than I am with music, bar none. There's no contest. So it makes me feel terrible. But but it makes me, it makes me it think should. about the fact. Yeah. It makes me think about the fact that even with TV, because it's so widespread and people have such particular tastes, I wonder how many people week to week actually sit there and care about every single thing that we talk about because there's no way that that's a large number at all. <laughs> no, no I way. Think, I think, so you guys will talk about a show that I know is not for me, right? Like, right. Um, like, so I watch Mr. Robot season one. Incredible TV. Absolutely. One Haven't of the started best two because there's post. been so much. Just finished The Handmaid's Tale. Mm -hmm. Got to finish it. You have to finish it. And you stop the press. Ryan, watch Black Mirror, you piece yeah, what of trash. Jay, watch it. We Jay knows how I feel about it. Get to work I am so, no. We should watch San Junipero tonight. It's so good. I am so over the... You guys have to watch what I'm watching. Hey, listen, I'm made. And look, we're look, all like that. Look, I, I know. When I people, know. I'm the music guy, and I say every week, hey, if there's something that you want me to check out, send That's it to right. me. Yeah. Guess what? I don't give a fuck. Don't yeah. send me shit. I didn't yeah. watch, I'm not going to listen to I it. I didn't watch The Dark Knight because everybody hyped <laughs> it up so much. I love everybody it. was like, oh, you've got to see it. Heath Ledger's so good. Life. And I was like, Heath Ledger's so good? No way. I'm not watching oh, it. Oh, my gosh. So I waited and I what waited. What a dated I take. I, can you believe what <laughs> you, you just heard? at that point, too. You have any sympathy? That's so dated. Dude, I, that's, so that's your, that's your, I get it, like, that's your average listener. Who doesn't know schmoes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't well, involved. what what you did though is way more interesting to me because, like, again, going back to Collider, they just did that top fifty superhero. I don't know if you were aware of that. They did a top fifty list of superhero movies, and at it was what a like sad list from like fifty to forty five. I was already telling Jay, I'm I, this is already going to be really uninteresting because the Dark Knight is just going to be number one again. Like, sure, it's just. What you just did is way more interesting to me when, when talking about movie fandom yeah. than just over and over talking about how good The Dark Knight is. I always feel like because when, when people hype it up, so oh you gotta because they were like you gotta watch Batman Begins. Yeah, or yeah, that was the first movie, and I so I fell asleep every time I tried to watch it because the first twenty five minutes I'm like, come on, do something. Yeah, you he haven't didn't want even to get in the once. suit. He didn't get, even get in the suit until like halfway through the movie. And they're like, who's the first villain? Scarecrow. Right. Who cares? Kevin Marks. Who cares? Right? Like, I get it. So, but when I finally watched it, I love it. It's my second favorite film of all time. No, okay. of the. Okay. The, <laughs> oh like, my what? God. That, that would have been awesome. Of Nolan's trilogy. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think it's my favorite uh, of the it, three. I've said it a million times. It's it's the best Batman movie in existence, but I could go either way on which one's actual the, the best of that trilogy. See, I love The Dark Knight Rises, too. I thought everybody gave Tom Hardy crap. I loved that voice. I love it. I, think, I, yeah, I don't I, mind being. I genuinely He's think. He's probably wondering why. It, the the voice, I will never argue. The voice is obviously crazy. <laughs> I loved it. it, and it the, just, the problem with that movie is, is Christopher Nolan. He's the problem with that movie. It's it's bloated. It's not only is it, it bloated, it could be but the narrative is awful. They introduce like fifty characters that you're supposed to have some sort of attachment to. It needs to be streamed live. Oh I mean, they even like it's even, like the Migos culture too. Even of, the way that oh they gosh, shoot, Migos. even the way that they shoot, like Matthew Modine. Yeah, like he's supposed to be some character. Right. But, I forgot but, he was even even Matt, in the movie. Um. Also with um. I remember like slash film and all these reports coming out about Juno Temple being cast. I don't even know Juno, who that is. Exactly. Juno Temple is the lead actress in the second episode of uh, Electric Dreams. The auto fact. Okay. That's a forgettable show. Philip K. Dick. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just telling you who an actress is. Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus James Chris. ready to review. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the point is. Let's talk about Culture 2 by Migos. They now. made it out to be like, who's the secret role? And it's the the lady that Catwoman lives with who's in two scenes. Right. And But again, it's another character that they introduce like it's supposed to mean anything at all. Yeah. It's just. It's you know just, who would be a good Catwoman? Gal Gadot. Little, It'll never happen. It's a little old. Um, for oh. Catwoman. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's compare her age to Anne Hathaway no, in 2012. The, the, yeah. the joke there is that I think everybody in a Batman movie should be under the age of, oh. of 30. False. He, he wants Zac Efron to be Batman. I do. That's, that's insane. Like, yeah, I love you, and I'm always with you. I always agree they, with they Jay. They laughed at Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> Affleck was incredible, and he shouldn't yeah. be done. He should not be done. I, I agree. I think... 
the conversation has changed because of the sexual misconduct. Sure. Um, and that's harder to defend, but I, I'm fine with still saying Batfleck is my Batman. Yeah. And I, w- I would hate to see him go, but I, I more than ever, and it's funny, I have ranted, I have screamed on this podcast about how much I want him to continue as Batman, but if, if he was not to return, and, and part of it too is the exhaustion of the, the flip-flopping and all that, if if tomorrow they announced that he was done, I would be probably more okay with it than ever before. I still think, though, and maybe it's because I'm older, like I'm 30, and I've read like the best graphic novel in of, of about a superhero is The Dark Knight, Frank Miller's take on all Have those. Have you seen the, the animated film? Oh, yeah, both of them. So I think, and, and it's great. It's super good. Um, super good. So The Killing Joke was a little weird. To me, um, the comic or the animated, the the, the animated, movie. yeah, the comics are great. I, I was the... I left the theater fine with it, but the more time goes on, I'm just like that. Yeah, was, I, that was nothing. So I feel like if they did that, Batman, I'm on board a hundred. I, I would just love to see, you know, and th- this might be a problem with Hollywood is that they'll probably do it at some point. Um, just like the so they've still been trying to do this Akira. Yeah, like live action movie, and it'll never work. You don't it think can't so? Because Akira is such a huge thing. What if like, Alita comes out and does really well? If if Battle Angel comes out and does really well, you don't think that they'll? Because Akira has been in development hell. Brad Pitt had it at once. That's I right. Think, I think Leo had it. That's right. At one point as well. They um, recently d- attached uh, Jordan Peele. That's to right. Direct and I don't. I well, think he, he no, backed he, out he, of it. He backed, but out they did attach him yeah, to it at yeah, one yeah, point. Well, it's yeah. such a it's such a beloved, like property right yeah so that's like trying to trying to make a, a a live action house moving castle or something like in that yeah. in that animated realm of plus the the cultures are just so different and hard to like right like i watched house moving castle with my wife my wife's huge into um miyazaki whatever and, that is yeah so sorry um, is that um what's that company called that puts out the studio ghibli that's right do you do you like uh do you watch any? I'm sorry to side tangent. Do you watch any movie reviewers on YouTube? Yeah. Do you watch Chris Stuckman? No. Oh my God. Chris Stuckman is obsessed with Ghibli. Yeah. So they're great. Now they don't make sense in like, I guess I'm too stupid for those movies. Yeah. Cause I was like, what just happened? Yeah. I, this is like a David Lynch animated movie. They're like, oh God. Um, they're like the glass jaw. Of now, an, hold an on. It's movie. not that bad. It's like David Lynch and Walt Disney. Yeah, made a movie. <laughs> that sounds it's, awful. That's not part of that the Ryan Snelling algorithm. But no, no. Anyway, but I just for don't some think, reason Atlanta is. Go I don't ahead. think that live action movies like that fantastical movies work. Like Chronicle, I saw that you you recommended mm-hmm. that to me too. Shout that's out to Max Landis. Great movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I loved it. It's Same great. with Looper. It t- I just rewatched uh, yeah. Looper. It's one of my favorite films of the decade. Yeah, it's great. Like I, it's it might be top five. So I just watched the, Chronicle. The 20 teens. I just rewatched Chronicle with Kayla the other day because she had never seen it. Chronicle Fantastic. is the closest thing to Akira they can do. Yeah. Right. Remember when they were making the Dragon Ball movie and we were all like, oh, finally. And right. then it's just the worst garbage I've ever yeah. seen. That that's probably the worst movie I've ever seen. Ray is the best Gohan on film that's ever existed. You know, the the reason why I laughed when you brought up Max Landis yeah. is it, I realized that I'm just now catching it. How we're accidentally talking about all of this stuff, right? But so many names that get brought up are under this uh, sexual misconduct stuff. Oh, yeah, it, it's crazy. everywhere. <laughs> it's nuts how many well, people we d- just accidentally brought up, and we're like, yeah. "Oh yeah, that person's also been nailed to a cross." Right? Uh, <laughs> it's nuts. I, I'm over. I'm over the conversation in general with a lot of that stuff. I think we talked about it last week with Carl when we were over here. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean to start that. No, I know, I, just, I know. I just thought it was a funny No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like putting it out there in general. Mainly, and before I go any further with that, let me just state, I'm over with sitting around with a bunch of guys having that conversation. Yeah, I, right. I think is a problem. Right. But anyways, Max Landis. <laughs> I had somebody uh, the other day, um, actually a guy that was staying with us, said that he was watching that show that he's got on air. Dark Gently? Yeah. Just got canceled. Yeah, I know. I heard about that. So so I watched... So when you talked about a scar no one else can see, Yeah, I watched that whole thing, and yeah. I was like, this dude, while I think he's, he's crazy, 
uh, this is so interesting. Absolutely. So then I started like trying to follow him on YouTube and like watching some of those short films he made. Right. The one about wrestling. If anything was going to convince me to like wrestling, yeah, it was going to be that. And I still don't. Th- that's, care. that's that's the thing. That's about, actually a pretty decent short too. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. That's it the thing. Really of, good. That's the thing about Max Landis. I mean, just all the jokes aside and the issues that I do have with him, I've I even said it. I'll I'll say it today. The fact that I think he's in, in an incredibly intelligent individual. Um, and one of the things that he's known for, one of the reasons he's so successful is because he's made a name for himself for how passionately he speaks about things. That's right. Is that a fair take? And nerdy things. Yeah. You're not going to get any I, cool points talking about wrestling in Hollywood. Or, or Carly Rae Jepsen. He, uh, I think what, I, I was so taken with him because th- his ability to pitch stuff. Exactly. That's right. what I'm saying. People yeah. would people would ask him questions at cons. There are videos of him at YouTube where someone just, I think someone just asked him a question what were the do you have an origin story for the crystal that gave the kids powers in chronicle and he he sat there for a second this chronicle two pitch it wasn't it, it was just the origin of that crystal oh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a plot else. and uh he just was like yeah during the mesozoic era and he just fucking goes off and gives you the most like quality right. like well thought out instantly <laughs> about this thing and yeah. like if you watch him like screen junkies movie fights it's, sure. it's a debate show he he he's the best at doing those pitches on I have show that skill too. screen junkies is awesome I have that skill about you like screen junkies oh I do good yeah. I have that skill of podcasting if who's you your, ask your... me okay. if you ask me to come up with a podcast I can do it it can be about anything. I love it. One of my, <laughs> one of the things we were having a conversation a second ago where Ryan couldn't contribute to the music discussions, and the whole time I was thinking about this sort of a bit that we do on After Schmo. Like I don't watch everything Schmo Down related, mm-hmm. but you can ask me to go into an in depth breakdown like I'm an expert, and I'll do it. Yeah, flawlessly. Yeah, I remember saying I like the guy with the hat. Who that on Schmo Down? Who's the that guy could with the be cowboy hat? anybody. He's oh, that's uh, Roka. Roka, bad boy. He's been on this podcast. He's a bad boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So is he the guy that did the mo- the like best of the top five? Who is that? He does a show called Top Ten. Who, no, on your podcast you had like best of TV, and someone said Westworld. You had somebody. Oh, on. Is that Jonathan Paula? That, that maybe Jonathan Paula is a, he's a YouTuber, but he's oh, not okay. in, he's not yeah. involved with any of those. R- Roka was on our our Logan review that we did. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Great film, by the way. Amazing. Yes. My second favorite movie of last year. Did you yeah. get to see Blade Runner? I have not seen Blade Runner yet. We, it's about to be on Netflix soon. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. So I watched a scene from <laughs> Are you from fucking it. kidding me? I just bought that goddamn No, thing. I'm joking because of the TV show that they're about to put out. Oh. <laughs> oh, gotcha. So I watched uh, the last film I, I saw was It, which was a lot of fun in theaters. No, that, that's not true. I went and saw It, and then we just went and saw, and it was not good. It was some kind of... I don't remember even what it was. It was terrible. But I'm like, I hate, um, I hate when you go, when you pay to go see a movie and you pay 20 bucks for your tickets, you pay like 50 bucks for your popcorn, and then you get in there and you sit down and it's a terrible movie. You had a hot take where you said, it's not hard to make a good movie. It's not. So I just, it's, it's hard to make a movie. I don't think it's hard to make a good movie. Like, make it good before you make the movie. Sure. Just figure it it out. It's easier to fuck it up, I feel like, than it is to make the movie. Just figure it out. And I guess the case against that, think of how difficult it is to be in a band with four other people. Yeah. Terrible. When you're on those productions, it is harder to be in a band than it is to make a movie. Disagree. (laughs) However. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, I disagree. You know what? I'll defend it. (laughs) You actually took my point and went the complete opposite direction right. of where I was going, which was that you Welcome can argue that there's so many cooks in the kitchen, but then you can follow back with, yeah, but there's also just one director who right. makes all the well, calls. But then it's- Kathleen Kennedy, which I, who I wouldn't have known who that was until you guys. Yeah, for sure. Kathleen Kennedy could come in and say, hey, we got this Colgate thing. We need to throw in the movie. Yeah. You got to do it. And then you, the director's like, but this, this, nope. Oh, the suits feel like... Uh, it could be a little sexier, you know. It's no, those yeah. are the kind of notes that you get, and so. But then you have people who are auteurs, like uh, what's his name with Mister Robot, um, Sam Esmail, who he literally has. Not only does he have complete control over his show, he can essentially tell USA 
like how to, how to run their business because say, there, there's a there's a little bit of I get desperation that. That's, that's in right. that. I get I get that, but listen, I think it was the second season. There were episodes that would just randomly be an hour and twenty minutes, an hour and fifteen minutes, right. an hour and forty. Like they just just had no standard runtime. They they've also done episodes with limited commercial breaks, no commercial breaks. Yeah. They input. Oh, well, you've seen season one. They input. Uh, uh, E Corp commercials into the commercial right. breaks. So it's like yeah. they do a lot of unprecedented things with that show on USA. One of the of coolest places. things that I thought that they did um, for season two, for the premiere, uh, the week before the premiere, they had someone hack USA and Mr. Robot and they leaked, obviously purposely leaked the premiere online for like 24 hours which was really cool yeah that's that's super cool i love marketing little techniques and stuff like that and they're the best that does it hashtag transparency as soon as i saw christian slater i was like oh this is gonna be awful i completely agree you mean kevin bacon (laughs) have you heard about that Uh -uh. when we first started doing uh recaps of mr robot (laughs) i i for whatever reason i said christian slater's name but i said kevin bacon instead and in my mind, I thought it made complete sense because they're interchangeable. <laughs> gotcha. one another. And that's just something it's I just totally true. disagree with. It's, it's yeah. not true. It's just not a thing. There's, He's admitting it. Well, yeah, of course. So, yeah. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those shows. Well, Christian Slater is what makes that show seem like another USA show. Right. Yeah. That's that's the part. At first glance, you think, what? Okay. No, this is another burn notice. Exactly. But with computer hacking. And I think that was that was part of one of our concerns watching that first episode is that there's kind of a hint of a procedural element, right? Like, is this guy a vigilante? Does he use these? And I guess in a way he still is, but it just it, it felt like when they're sitting in that coffee shop in that first episode, and it, it, he was in, not interrogating yeah. that guy, but blackmailing that guy. We thought that this was going to be every episode, and it turned out that it wouldn't be. But that but. should inform you guys too, because I never would have watched Mr. Robot ever. If you guys hadn't talked about it so much, and then I try, so I tried Legion, yeah, and Legion was great, yeah, um, but it, I didn't have a lot of access to it because yeah. I, I don't have cable, right? Same. Um, so it, I had to wait until after to watch it. But then also, you when you would talk about Migos, I tried to go <laughs> listen to Migos, right? And it's it's nothing. But it I is. didn't. But in fairness, the. the I I don't <clears throat> think I gave like an overwhelmingly positive review of Migos, like. You, what you did was you you were excited about what the direction that they were going in. Right. Let's talk and, about that. We'll, we'll t- I want to talk yeah. about that in a second. Yeah, go ahead. Keep going, though. So I felt like... So I, I made a comment saying that I hated mumble rap. And I do. Little Uzi Vert, Lil Yachty. It's trash. Yeah. And people... <laughs> like Future? I, we went and looked at the... You know that... No life. Whatever that song is. I don't know what that is. I can't get no life. I don't know. I don't it's, know they all is. sound the same. It's trash. I think it's they're on a boat. And the video's really funny. Lonely Island. Oh, anyway, yeah. it's trash. Uh, I can't no, have right. no wife. One life. I don't know what it is. Anyway. More life. It's, Some life. It's terrible. And I'm watching it going, this is a joke. Right. Like, there's no way people dig this. Like, 53 million yeah. views. And I was like... I was shocked. So then you said, well, go check out Travis Scott's rodeo. Yeah. And that's great. Right. That's the difference between like good. Yes. To me, good modern music. Like can it can be done. So like rem- whenever there's a huge band, record labels go out and they say, let's find someone exactly like that. That's what happened in the 80s, like metal movement. You know, when you had like Poison, um, Motley Crue and all the bands. Music throughout time. Yeah. I mean, every major. Find something cool and copy music. the crap out yeah. of it. Let me, if you, let me follow up with the question I asked you earlier. When, when there's a topic like Migos yeah. that you don't know anything about and you hear Jay and I talking about it, do we do a good job balancing, like, explaining it for the people that might not have context of this artist? Like, yeah. do Jay and I approach it with, Here's what you need to know, and here's why you may or may not like it. Or is it just about do or do we act like that we know no, you this do. person, and there's no sort of opening the door for the listener? No, if you like it, it's it's how you talk about it that makes me excited. So right. even if like the OA, 
our and 13 reasons why these are two shows that you guys recommended to us on on the the podcast a passionate discussion that's right yeah. so i went and uh i watched the oa after you guys started talking about because you're like this is weird um but it's great i can't explain it but so i was hyped to go watch it so i watched it loved it well i hated it and then i loved it 13 reasons why uh at the beginning i was like this is trash kids don't have tattoos kids don't talk like this this is trash uh, but, depressed. but the the more I, I watched it and got into it, I was like, okay, so so I get it now, right? And by the end, you know, if you don't if you don't cry at some point in that show, well, then you must be Jay Williams. That's right. But I cried like a baby. Hey, oh yeah, not me. So so I think you guys do a great job. The when I don't go and listen or or try and follow, it's if I know I just don't care. Right. Like when you talked about Migos, I didn't listen to Migos. Right. So I'm gonna check it out. So I always and typically, so I run in my basement sometimes. And I put the podcast on these like PA speakers, so my wife hates it. But um, <laughs> does she like us? Does she hate us? No, she. So we really. <laughs> this is funny. Right now in the future, she's listening to this episode right. of Brando on site and Sam talking about her. That's yeah. right, baby. I love you. Well, he's running You're on the trip. So beautiful. Um, <laughs> so she listened to the Brando breakdown. Actually, she didn't. I didn't send it to her. <gasps> yeah. Anyway, what a great episode. It was great. Uh, well, I haven't heard it. Can't we'll wait to do it again. That you haven't heard it? But we'll, we'll talk about that. It's well, trash. Well, at the end of this episode, I was under the impression that you were going to interview me. That's right. Well, listen, we'll talk about this because I want to talk specifically about this. But continue. For your A Little Life EP. Jay, um, keep, uh, a little life. Like <laughs> Jay keep putting your uh, your questions in life. this memory bank here. You're, yeah. You I know. Save. I've got three. I was going to say, Go okay. keep saving them up here. You're talking about your wife listening. Yeah, to this. so... Yeah. So she will listen to this for sure. But we were riding in the car listening to Sight and Sound. <laughs> and uh, I made her listen to it because I had to take her to work. And I was like, if I'm driving, I get to listen to what I want. Absolutely. And so <laughs> I put on Sight and Sound and then I heard my name on the podcast. And I was like, <gasps> yeah, you know, I just got low key excited. And <laughs> she's like, is that you? Do you know them? That's not <laughs> how you sound, baby. I, that's not how my wife that, sounds. That is a <laughs> stereotypical voice that every boyfriend makes for their I'm girlfriend. I'm so sorry. So that's, she said, Babe. That's the voice I use when I'm yeah. talking about Eric. Babe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Snelling. Snelling thanks. Um, well, I just figured that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so we were listening to it. And anyway, so that's how she, she knows of. So she'll listen to this. Right. All I have to say is she'll listen to this. Before we move forward. Yeah. Sorry, Jay. God damn it. Let's, let's keep boxing Jay <laughs> out here. No, um, I'm just gonna turn your mic. I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm always, I was always under the impression that the person who rode shotgun was DJ. Fuck no, oh, are you serious? That's how my friends group operated for years. That's why your friends the are like the way they are. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much sense. How many times so have bad. you ever selected music in my car? Exactly. Never. <laughs> exactly. In fact, Jay will come across all the songs that I want to listen to, and without me saying a word, he knows to skip them. That's right. Yeah, I, I think he driver knows. picks. He not only does driver picks, but driver also. You play well, shows. No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about. I'm, no, I'm just talking about your ability. Yeah. To somehow know there's no exchange of words at all. But I think <laughs> that he knows 100 when he finds a song that I am loving, and he'll just go skip. And in my head, I'm going, damn. <laughs> yeah, I'm you trying to show. Like you I'm trying it. to show you no, new stuff. No, no words are exchanged <laughs> ever, but it happens awesome. all the time. Actually, when I do it, I go, I look over, and I go, <laughs> bitch, <laughs> voices. He, he can love this. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard this band that sounds like this? Skip. Yeah. Oh my god, that would make me so mad. He can see me squirm like in my seat. Fuck. Don't yeah. move. He'll keep it. <laughs> it rocks. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now I have to remember the questions. They go into the memory to tap bank. It. Well, it's, I've got CT, so it's difficult. No, uh, <laughs> I, I, I do. Want, I want to go back to to Migos for a second. That's how far Let's back we're running running these questions. So the funny thing about Migos that happened this time, they did this whole thing where they released an album a year after they released. First of all, I just feel like that's a brand new thing, right? Like bands used to not do that. Release an album every year. Artists are right. doing that so often now. And I've talked about it before, but I feel like there's a distinct quality drop off. But the thing with Migos that happened with this album, with the first one I gave, I just said, it's not for me personally. I don't, but I, I like the production. I, I can see where people would like this. When I listened to this new one, uh, culture two, I drew a line in the sand and I said, 
this one, it's nothing. Two, all they've done is they it's first of all, an hour and forty five minutes of music is That's far ridiculous. it's far too long. I saw that. That's bullshit. It, no, it, it's <laughs> it's 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 absolutely awful. It makes me angry just thinking about it. But I've <laughs> told myself now that I am no longer going to give a pass to artists that are just making by the numbers, you know, paint paint by numbers sort of music yeah. and production. It's just I'm not going to do it anymore. I was going to say, what does that tell you as the consumer? What does that tell you about how much time and effort they put into that hour and 40 well, fucking it, it, minutes Well, it relates. It's it specifically, you brought up all the points that I could have made too, but uh, that's why we're we're brothers for life. Um, it comes down what, to me? the- No, Brando. I was going to say. It, it, it comes, <laughs> doesn't sound like you. It comes down to the fact that this music is, it's become watered down. It's become yeah. so oversaturated that there is a, a, a distinct difference between this paint by number stuff and with Travis Scott, like if somebody could listen to rodeo and listen to this and say, I don't really get it, but Travis Scott, at least in his production techniques, he's doing things like slightly different to the point where it's a little bit interesting. Yeah. But I just, it, we went through this with metal core right. and hardcore and screamo and post hardcore you just hear the same idea so many times over and over and over again that you just become numb to it. Well, and and then we're living in a time too where you have Drake. Drake's still releasing yeah. music. You have uh, Tyler, the creator, still releasing music. Kanye's still putting stuff out. So I don't like... And they're still me, held to a really high sure. regard. For me, like... I, so remember in like the early 2000s, mid 2000s, you would have bands or, or rap artists that were big and huge. Yeah. And then you'd have like... You're slightly lower, but they were still doing better than any rock fan. Right. But like Three Six Mafia or like any of those kinds of hip hop artists at that level, like no one cared. Right. And 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 so you'd have like um, you know, Kanye was releasing music still then and yeah. and uh and Jay Z. So when those guys release, it's like, what? And then you get three six mafia and like all these like kind of trash I, I call it like trashy hip hop. Right. Um, no one cared. Right. Like, like there was a few kids at school that cared, but then like in certain bubbles, yeah, yeah. It, it made no mark on culture. And now you have all these mumble rap artists who, like, I don't understand how how you can release music like that, and and it's supposed to be fun and it's just party music, right? right? But then you'll have sometimes they'll try and say stuff like Lil Uzi Vert tries to say stuff sometimes. Yes, yeah. they get in their feels. Yeah, and so what I want to say Ryan's is like during the music conversation, how can you, <laughs> how can you do that at the same time? A monopod? Hang on, he's trying to have a conversation. While we're... No, I'm not, I wanted you to keep talking. At the same time, Tyler the Creator's releasing music. Kendrick Lamar is releasing music. You know, I, 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 and again, they don't always have to be the same thing. I just don't understand it. Right. I don't understand the appeal. I, I get that it's just dumb party music, um, but I there's. To me, there's just such a difference. Yeah. And, and I guess they don't have to be the same thing. So if you're out there and you like Migos or you like Lil Uzi Vert or Lil Yachty, <laughs> that's fine, but, but it's nothing. <laughs> R.I.P. It's it's interesting. Who? Yeah, who are you R.I.P.ing to? Lil Peep. Oh, Lil Peep. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So Lil Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's like a level of things where I do give a benefit of the doubt to and a pass to where I just say that it's not for me. But when I hear an hour and 45 minutes of indiscernible songs that, I mean, you can't tell the difference between any of them for the most right. part. I just, I can't do it anymore. But it, it's, it's funny too, because you brought up Kanye and these huge artists. Those are the people that move the needle in these genres and cross over, but they don't sound anything like these other people. That's right. Like, yes, they have elements trap elements and this and that they might bring people on to their songs but they don't actually sound like them so it's it is fascinating because if uh, an under oath put put out an album or uh, norma jean or those big artists people would look at them and start mimicking them that's right and it's funny and and i i always compare hip-hop now to rock music then because for instance remember how big the devil wears prada was yes i mean huge gigantic and now they're just playing normal clubs that our bands would probably get booked at. They're opening. Yeah. So I just saw they're opening for A Day to Remember. And then 
There was another big band opening that I was I, like, I saw that Prada is like yeah. on the lower end of the bill. Yeah, right. I was like, when did that happen? Like, are we that old that the bands that we cared about are no longer cared about? I mean, I, I don't necessarily think it's that, but because the day to remember came out around the same time. Right? I booked. Yeah, I had yeah. I had a day to remember booked at a show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, once in Lexington, but it's it is fascinating because uh, the de- and here's the thing about the Devil Wears Prada is I actually think I actually think they're a pretty good band. Yeah, I do too. And I think they're still making really decent music, but it's just because the genre has been watered down and it's sort of gone through the motion, so to speak, that people just sort of stop caring. And they, for whatever reason, they were a band. They never really just did specifically what was popular. That's right. You know, they never. I mean, yeah, they they'd always had singing parts, but they almost got heavier. They were they were like a, they were like under oath in the way, and maybe not as substan- substantial to right. you at least. But like they, but they, but they did get they, more abrasive. They set the trends. Like they, when, Prada would put exactly. an album out, and then everybody yes, sounded yes. like that on their next but, album. But to right. the until they changed degree. it again. I mean, Rise Rise Records is like a record label that has like a bunch of bands that all sound exact, or they used to. Yeah, that all sounded exactly the same. Like you literally could not discern the difference between bands yeah uh, they had a few gyms you know on mm-hmm. on there but mo- for most part like you're right prada like everyone sounded like dear love a uh, beautiful discord or whatever that album was called yeah right until plays came out that's and right then, and then they would just that it, <laughs> it was weird how every band in the scene would just follow the next thing that prada and did. then prada was self-aware enough to say we got to do something different. They pretty much left the genre. Yeah. yeah. Like they're in, in the music community that we're talking about right now, they don't even exist anymore well, because, because they moved into more of like a metal scene. They, right. they did something that I challenge. I talk about as a challenge to other artists right now, especially in the hip hop genre. If you get to a certain level of being so big, you've made your money, you've made your success. You, you don't have any reason to just continue to be on the trend you that's right you can run in the opposite direction like they did for the most part that's why bands like zayo yes and converge like you might not be super into those bands but those bands i mean they can do whatever they want and their followers are just on board same with bands like thrice now they're not as heavy but thrice went from artist in the ambulance thrice is an outlier though they are but thrice was a band that could do artist in the ambulance and then turn around and do the very next record was via sue yeah and that record sounded like heavy muse wildly different yeah and it was great songwriting there was a lot of orchestration on that right. stuff and it was incredible it, yeah the, it, listen one thing real quick to just ju- and support what you're saying thrice are a perfect example that if you can just write good music you can honestly do whatever the fuck you want that's right like they all they have done throughout their entire career is say we're just going to straight up challenge our fan base I, I know people who like that band who stopped listening on every single album, essentially. Like, That's right. I liked this band up until this point, but then they got a bunch of new fans. And it's just like, if you if you are good songwriters and you do what you want, that good things will happen. Yeah, if you karma. take risks. <laughs> That's not karma, is it's it? It's not karma at all. <laughs> That's what it's I like being about, truthful. It's being truthful. That's what real. I like about filmmaking. That's what I yeah. like about music. Is I want something that is going to. Sh- that's why I like Black Mirror. Um, <laughs> it's one of the things like when you subvert my expectations. Do you guys watch the Nerd Writer? Uh, I've watched him before. He's yeah. got a great he did one video about Bonnie on Black Bear. Mirror. Oh yeah, the Holocene one is yeah. fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, um, great song, best song he's ever written. Um, however, what won him a Grammy for sure? Yeah. So I love that. Like when you subvert my expectations, I'm in. Right. If I can't predict, and and I think about it with music because I know some theory. So most of the time in a pop song, I can tell you, okay, here we go. One, (laughs) four, minor six, yeah, five. I I just know that that's that's what's going to happen. Right. And so, um, in movies, same way they follow the same kind of beats. Okay, here comes. Oh, here's the the hero's journey. Right. So when you subvert those things, I'm I'm on board immediately, even if it's not good yet. But I can see where it's going. I'll be on board. And that's the funny thing, too, about uh, uh, to sort of tie music and movies together. People sort of turn their noses up at Marvel films. And I get why that is, because it is relatively formulaic. But to me, Marvel films are like pop music, right? That's right. But if you make, if you write a good pop song, it's fucking great. And if you write a good Marvel movie, it's fucking great. But to, so to me, Winter Soldier, for example. Yeah, or, overrated. It's not. 
Uh, <laughs> it's the best Marvel movie of all time. I, I, I think it's a good movie. I yeah. think it's massively overrated. But go sure. ahead. I'm sorry. But I just had to give my take. I loved and in it there were no twists per se. Right. What? Eh. The Winter Soldier? Yeah. They completely put Shield, they completely flip-flopped what Shield was all oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that, yeah. That changed but, the entire MCU more than most of the films in that universe. But what I mean by that is like I the tone of the movie was drastically different from other Marvel films. Yes. Right. How so that was like an indie pop song that's still big. That's like a Halsey. That's like a Americana. It's like a death cab for cutie. That's like right. Breaking through. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> Soul Meets Body. That's be, right. Being on the OC. So like or or the Batman, like the Dark Knight trilogy. Right. In those movies, I, I had what I thought the movies were gonna be, and then they weren't that, right? Yeah. When I watched the OA, n- no one saw that coming. That the thing that's actually going to save the world is <laughs> dance, interpretive dance, right? <laughs> like, or Stranger Things. You know, at first I thought that was going to be The Goonies or, yeah. um, you know, e. Stand by Me. Yeah, and it has both those elements. It and definitely it's is those things. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, it's it wasn't that, and I love that. Also, with that, I'm also done with the '80s. But I'm also done with the 90s. Really? The 90s fashion, the chokers. Must we do the chokers in the dark? I mean... The da- everyone looks like Daria. I'm just going to open my... <laughs> I'm just gonna Why open, does everybody got to dress like Daria? I'm just going to open my closet Jane. and show you all my flannel that I've got in oh, here. Oh, look. No, I'm I the have same three way. red red flannels in Dude, a row. I'm the same way. We own a lot of the same shirts. Just mine are <laughs> a lot bigger than yours. You shop at Kroger, too? Because uh, we do. We don't have Kroger. We have Schnucks. You don't have a Kroger? They have Kroger out in California. Why don't you have Kroger? Oh, no, I'm sure there's Kroger somewhere where I am, but they don't have them. It's not the primary thing? Yeah. No. <laughs> Food Lion? <laughs> Piggly Wiggly? What's the other one? No. Publix. Yeah, Publix is down in Florida. We do, like, shop and save. Every time I see a Publix, I think it says Pubix. IGA. That's IGA? In, in, no, we don't have that. It's in is there Midway. still one here? No. There's oh. a Save-A-Lot. Gotcha. Um, Save-A-Lots are great. Yeah, you, you can get your, me. You can get your Migos over at Sable. All day. Uh, where do you shop for groceries, Ryan? It's great. Kroger discussion. It is. Uh, I you know Kroger's expensive. You know what's funny about where where you live is when I was dating. No, why? I'm married, Ryan. Do you have a Kroger Plus card? Uh, they don't have Kroger's where I live. Oh, yeah, that's right. We just had that discussion. Well, I mean, okay. Well, to your point, Kroger is only expensive if you don't have a Kroger Plus card because that's the genius. But also, it's not genius. It's how they get you. They charge it, well, you what yeah, they want it's, anyway. It's genius in a in a business sense. Oh, right. It, yeah. It gives them a reason to charge outrageous prices for right. groceries, and you know when you have that Kroger Plus card, that's you bringing it down to a reasonable price, not to a, a, an even more cheaper price. Sight but. and Sound Groceries come in twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sight and sound shopping. That's what I want. The fashion thing. Who was I talking to the other day? And they said something like, "Huh, it's interesting how how much you talk about clothes. I've, I've said it a lot. Like the one, if there's one thing that I don't get to talk about on sight and sound a lot, I I love fashion. Like I just really like it. I hate it. I hate it. But you know, what's funny. You hate it. But when we, when we go places together that have clothes, yeah. You get he gets so into it though. Here, like, here's here's when why we I don't go to like Kroger, it. he gets really excited. Here's here's we, why I don't like it. We bought matching hats. Here's why I don't like it. It's because if if it, if it's a conversation between me and you on site and town that gets brought up and Jay says things to me like you could use this or, like I hate right. that kind of talk because then that makes me self-conscious and think why is Jay judging how I dress? Because I don't. <laughs> the same give... reason we judge movies and music yeah. and no, television. No, it's not the same. Be- no, the, yeah. my point is, I don't give a fuck about how you dress. I don't even know what you're wearing. I've, I, I have no idea what Brando is wearing right now. I assure everyone because I'm wearing clothes. Because, well, no, I, my point is, I walked in, I shook your hand, looked you in the eye, and that's all I needed. I don't care right. what he looks like ever. So it bothers me. That whenever we're together, or when we go out, Jay's like, "Oh, he could use this. He but, he could roll his jeans up wearing those shoes." So and so, it, I'm not saying he intentionally talks down to me, but that's that's no, what that, it feels no. like. But that's it, what that's what it feels sure. like when I do that with anybody. So not just Jay. so when I don't when him Kayla out. and I like uh, when we I, don't, I was about to say when we hang out together, we fucking live together. What am I talking about? <laughs> when we see each other in the house, uh, we we're constantly like telling each other, "Oh." That would look good with this. Oh, listen, man. The ladies, 
they love going shopping with Jay because I don't give. I'm like, yes, let me see yeah. what you're what you want to buy. That's right. I don't know what it, it is about it. Like, or I don't know what the deal is with that. I just. If I was thin, I would be way more into it. I'd be like the flashiest <laughs> dude. Dude, you've always had dope style. Well, it's just I lo- if you look like a lumberjack wearing, and you're big. We're both wearing boots right now. That's right. Which I like. Yeah. If you're big, you there's only so much you can do. Like if you're big, sweatpants are just out for you ever. You're yeah. not allowed to buy them. Same with Twinkies. You cannot buy Twinkies well, at a store if you're fat. I, you can if you live in Frankfurt, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there are you plenty shouldn't. of people who have no like, problem. I always wanted to do a style for big guys, right? Don't wear it too Absolutely. tight or you look like too much sausage in a casing. And don't wear it too big or you look like, <laughs> you know, you, you look bigger than you're supposed to. So wear stuff that kind of fits, <laughs> that doesn't show off all your curves if you're a, a well endowed dude or a fat dude. It, here's, here's the funny thing about uh, the, <laughs> the. You called yourself well endowed. No, I didn't mean just, it that way, you though. You just snuck that no, in there. No, no, I didn't. So it's just so everyone knows. Start, I'm really I did not mean it that I'm way. It. I'm going to start a blog for what the well endowed, <laughs> the well endowed men. No, but, I meant like fat, not like in the PP. Brendan, you got a big dick? In the P. Okay. Uh, I don't want to talk about this. We just, Chris, Kristen and Christy. Hashtag Heather, transparency. They're all like, oh, no. Gross. no, they they like it. They, they, uh, they, I'm sorry. Christina, I apologize to it everyone. was funny. Christina, when we put up that, uh, that wild <laughs> video that we did, she was like, you guys, you guys aren't funny anymore. That's essentially what she said. <laughs> That's how I read it. She was like, you guys don't act like this ever. That was great. Talking about horse dick and stuff like that. She was like, you guys. You guys are a little bit that's, more. I mean, that's how I wish it was all the time. Like, Those cuts take so long, though. Oh, yeah. Like editing a video like that. I know. So when I saw it, I was like, this would be dope. Yeah. But I wouldn't watch it. I'd still listen because that's how I take in the sight and sound stuff. But I, I think I, a lot of people would watch you guys like, oh, if absolutely. it was that way. That, that video that I uploaded to sight and sound, that was a new edit. Like the, the yeah. way it exists on film beef, it's not the same as it exists on sight and sound because I wanted to change it again. So. Yeah, it was basically like. If you haven't seen it, it's basically like a Joe Rogan where it'll cut to the guest yep. or you know in the host back and forth as they they talk and it sounds good and it's funny. The funny thing about that is uh that heavily manipulated. The, sure. The, and the funny thing about that is that video and correct me if I'm wrong was always intended to be shorter. It wasn't supposed to be a full podcast type of thing, which is just interesting that you're comparing it to Rogan, right. but it's meant to be and, and I don't know cuz I saw people being like, "Oh, I wish Excuse me, Sight and Town Weekly was like this, but those videos or that Brian was putting out were meant to be short form videos. Yeah. And those videos would literally take days yeah. to to edit. So do you want more content or do you want less content, yeah. better content? Yeah. Well Brando gets that it. all depends. There if we keep doing what we're doing, there will be a day, hopefully, where we can go to screenings. And then we have the time, like if we screen a movie on a Wednesday night or or even on a Thursday during a premiere, why are you looking at him like that? I think it's funny that you're you're saying we we will go to screenings. Oh, I'm sorry. It, I will go. In the same way that we will get invited to concerts <laughs> and we will go and watch the shows and we will interview the bands together. It's just funny because uh, I would love to go to screenings with you. But it's just funny that it was like <laughs> we have to go to screenings together. See, there's a lot of this that they're missing. Right now, Ryan right. has a look on his face that is pure comedy. It was it was just funny because it was like the assumption of sight and sound in the future would be like, well, yeah, of course we're all gonna go to movies. Why screening. wouldn't we? Well, how do you how do you how do you imagine it going? Well, you would go to the movie screenings. And I, w- I would do the movie takes, but, and I would come along when I want to watch the movie that's that's coming out. Maybe this this could lead to an interesting off air discussion. It's also we also just don't even need to have it right now. But anyway, I'll just keep going with my apparent hypothetical. Um, what well, I mean, you understand what I'm what I'm saying though? Yeah, you don't want to go do stuff with. Me. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, here's what it is. Jay's like, yeah, there's gonna be a day when I get invited to concerts, and he's just hearing for the first time that I br- I'm no. bringing him along to my hypothetical dream, and he doesn't ha- want to have anything. To no, do listen. With. I if it, let, let's say Sight and Sound was <laughs> ran the way that Film Beef was, in the sense where you reviewed a movie every single week, I wouldn't be on those episodes. In the same way that if if we didn't have jobs right now and we were doing Sight and Sound. And we got invited to script. Like I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't. You wouldn't. Go, I wouldn't overnight be a movie reviewer just because you wouldn't. You it's wouldn't full-time. make it a habit to go to screenings for Sight and Sound. Not coverage. every single one. No, absolutely not. Even if Sight and Sound was a self-sustaining, like all the gears, the engines were running, and we were a thing. You wouldn't. No, I. I don't want to be a so movie the big reviewer. Ones. Yeah, exactly. The ones yeah. that I'm like super interested in. Interesting. Absolutely. Like, because I almost think you would. Because <laughs> so, do you guys subscribe to Cinemassacre? No, what, I, I, mean, I have this. before. Yeah, so it's the angry know. video game nerd was their like big item. Um, right. But so Lee, after Lee loves that channel. After you know, big Lee. movies come out, Lee, yeah, Lee, Lee Stratton. I love that guy. He he li- he likes that channel. Um, anyway, he vapes. Yeah, good. So, <laughs> good. <laughs> so when he, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have liked him if he didn't. Uh, so when they go see movies, they even at midnight they'll just go. They won't talk about it in the car. And as soon as they get home, they set up a camera and they just talk about it, right? Like right. both on camera about how they felt about it. I'm sure they edit it later or whatever. But to have those, if if you because you if you want the freshest take, you got to do it instantly, right? Yeah. Um, and the hits. That's right. Because I I did notice that 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 Drake thing that you did had a ton of absolutely. Hits. And then it got taken down. It did. Yeah, dude. That sucks. Yeah, it's annoying. But it, it is, is what so it is. stupid. But did yeah, your trailer reaction get taken down. Uh no, good. Cause I don't I don't get that. What well, there, we did we did more, get a music is more harsh for whatever reason. We did we did get a uh, uh, a flag for it. But but I I've always known that that's how right. it was. I never like I, I even asked Jay. I was like if you if you edited the video to where you were breaking up the songs and you're reacting to it, then why does it have to be taken down? Yeah, it, it's strange. E- even like Big Quint, who's one of the biggest. Um, oh yeah. Music reactors on on YouTube, he br- he breaks up his songs, and he actually got a bunch of takedown notices and had to take them down yeah. and cut more out and re-upload. And, them. Well, actually, let me clarify. What's actually in question here is Jay's Drake video got taken down. Yeah. Whereas my right. videos no are channel. demonetized. Like all those trailer reactions I've done, we don't earn any. And, and mine, mine was, his mine was, li- his was literally removed from. But mine YouTube. was demonetized already. Like, right? We, I voluntarily was like, I'm not gonna make. It was just me creating art, essentially. Yeah. And they literally said this will not be accepted on our website, and it was taken down. And it wasn't YouTube though. It wasn't YouTube. That, I know it was. Yeah. It was, it was uh, whoever, cash money. No, it wasn't even them. They a, a, it, it a lot says, of hilarious record it, says, it says cash money. It, on, that that's on what it, notice. So the way the way that works with music is uh, a lot of these record companies have have a third party company that is solely responsible to go after people like that. Like the whole Radiohead and Lana Del Rey thing. Another company on behalf of Radiohead brought that to their attention. That, that makes, makes way sense? more sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. That's how that works. But regardless, it, it is stupid that that's the case. Um, I, I was a little bit surprised I didn't get anything for the Justin Timberlake one. But, yeah, to your point, though, yes, the quicker you do things. Yeah, <laughs> the hot take filthy is incredible. So th- that's something on their channel? No, I'm saying Justin oh, Timberlake single oh, yeah, yeah, filthy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, hated yeah. it. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. I can't stop. You're into Won't it. stop. Really? Oh, yeah, it's amazing. It. Do you like the new song? No, it's trash. With with Chris Stapleton? No, I, that one I like. Okay. What was the one in between the two? Supply. Oh, it was that yeah. song is garbage. You know Still. what? I really like the beat of that song. I think it's better sure. than Filthy. Oh no, oh, Filthy's incredible. I, I definitely agree with Ryan there. Oh yes. No, so here here's the reason. Yeah. I'm a bass player, right? Right. And so well, you play guitar too. So. I, I do, and you sing that a little. That bass line. It's it's fire. You're on key. It's incredible. I don't, I don't even have to go back in and auto tune. That's right. Just yeah, <laughs> just fix that in post. Um, what if we did? But it's what if awesome. anytime we sing, we had to on the podcast, we had to go back in. And <laughs> that does seem like something I would ask. Pitch yeah. corrected. So that it, I, I love the beat. I hate the little wah, 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 that kind of dub oh, yeah. steppy thing over it. I, I think that, that detracts thing. from it. And I hate that like Southern gospel rock section where it's like in the yeah, beginning. Yeah. What is that called? Does that have a term? In it? I, I mean, know. it's essentially it, a crescendo, but it's not really. It doesn't even build to it. It just kind of. No, it's just like a. Uh, it, it's just a turnaround. Hey, let's go. Say it. Yeah. Hey. And I love it. <laughs> when that beat drops, though. It's it's wow. so it's the wow. same wow. thing yeah. with uh, Taylor Swift's song. Look what what you made me do. Number one, you hate Taylor Swift. No, I don't. 
I don't hate anybody, Brando. Okay. That, that song is garbage. My, that song is incredible. My relationship let me with it. the Lord has made me not hate anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious about that. Yeah, good. Um, but regardless, no, I don't hate her, but she is awful. In many sure. <laughs> sure. But her that song is catchy. It's in, The lyrics are trash. Yeah, she's... That, um, because she's dad. Right. Like, that part drives me insane. However, the first time they drop that chorus, I am like, yeah. I am here right. for this I, right now. I'm actually more bothered. It's funny you bring up the chorus. I don't particularly like it. But the, the her other hit that's out right now, that don't know. It, I think it builds so... It reminds me a lot of Extraterrestrial, the Katy Perry yeah, song. Yeah, E.T. She, whatever, whatever T. Swift's new song... It's not really new. It's as new as Look What You Made Me Do. E.T. sucks. Go ahead. Whatever is that the one with Kanye in it? Yeah, I like that song. Go ahead. I didn't mean regardless. The song. I regardless, movie. whatever video is out right now that Taylor Swift is in some futuristic thing. Yeah, um, it builds so much momentum in the verse, and then the chorus completely ruins it. Sure, I, think, I guess you don't know what I'm referencing, so this conversation cannot continue. No, the the I I think that the production on her records, the way that her records sound, yeah, incredible. Yeah, you like that. Oh, yeah. I like it a lot. Interesting. I've never really paid that much attention to it because I think she's awful, but uh, <laughs> it could be a dong take, but sure. I don't know. My my issues with, most of my issues with Taylor Swift lie primarily behind the scenes. Stuff. Oh, yeah. she's. I'm, I'm sure she's a terrible human being. She just bothers me. I mean, yeah. yeah anyway. Let's move on. Like Swift. when there's a when there's a when there's any celebrity that just has that seepage, they just like seep into your life and get under your skin, like like Paul you Dano. Even, you don't. Even, <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's great. Well, so the, the, well, so, actually, no, it's not like Paul Dano. I dislike Paul Dano for different reasons than I dislike Taylor Swift. There, sure. Th yeah, this is a fascinating conversation for the simple fact that th there are people that annoy the public and annoy the zeitgeist simply for existing alone because of how popular they are and the how, Kardashian effect. how frequent, oh, yes, exactly gosh. how frequent they are. But then there's things that people do. Like for instance, I get why people don't like Kanye. Right. I mean, sure. he's, he's a very polarized, totally individual. understandable. Totally he's a good. wacko. Yeah, he is. He's, he's a, <laughs> Obama he's, called him a jackass. Yeah. He's a wacky dude. <laughs> and, um, so I get, I get it from that perspective, but I'm going to start calling people on the whole dong thing when, they're just not liking somebody to not like somebody. Like I, yes. I'll be completely honest. I used to be that way about Dave Matthews. Like I honestly haven't listened to much of Dave Matthews, but you weren't missing much. when his, when his name gets brought up, it, it annoys me. You know what I tried to do recently? I was like, you know what? Will it rain today? <laughs> I, I had I'm this out of my element here. <laughs> I had this, I don't belong. I had this thing where I was like, I need to at least give nickel back one more try. <laughs> And I listen, Did you? I listen. They have some. They have some good songs, but he's for the a, most he's part, he's a fine singer. For the most part, I, I just don't enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, but do they need to garner the type of disrespect they deserve? Fuck no. Agree. Yeah. Same with Creed, except it Scott was like, Stapp's kind of a weapon. And, and I sort of uh, realized that early. There was that video that came out where they went out on stage. Like, do you remember this? It was like <laughs> yeah. And five or six years ago, and they just somebody guys, like threw something at him, yeah. like a bottle he, of piss or something. Yeah, like and he he just said. He just said, fuck it, I'm leaving. And then yeah. they, they quit playing the show. And no, he actually I just, said, I felt terrible. He said, now, do you guys want to continue doing this? Or you want to hear some rock and roll? And yeah. he got hit again. Yeah. And I just felt <laughs> terrible. Really I was like, <laughs> Nickelback is a classic example of one of those. It's sort of like a mob mentality. Yeah. Like absolutely. over yes. over time, you hear everyone talking about how much they hate Nickelback. And then one day you're just convinced that they've, you hate Nickelback. They've been become a butt, the butt of the zeitgeist joke. Yeah. Do you think it'll turn around? For them, they would need to make something like... Well, I think that joke in general has died off. I still think they sell out places. Oh, absolutely. That's And that's the... Yeah. Listen, you don't become the collective butt that's of right. jokes without being larger than I wonder life. what their kids think. Ah, that's a good question. Uh, I th You know, that's that's got to be crazy. How old, uh, it depends on how old their kids are because... It, I think it would matter if, like, their kids were, like... In high school. In in high school, and then all of their other friends were talking about how bad Nickelback yeah. was. Then it would matter. But if Chad Kroger's daughter is, like, six, it it doesn't matter. If you're all. in right. Canada, and you go to take out a, a lovely young lady... That's right, they're Canadian. And you they? find out that her, her dad is the lead singer of Nickelback. You freak out? 
I'd say I, I need to put a I, ring on it because I it's got some money. <laughs> I would like think about it. We're all talking about how how much we've made fun of Nickelback over the years. If I find out I'm dating Chad Kroger's daughter, I'm gonna be on his nuts. I'm going to be honest. Now. Can, we, can you get me backstage? That's right, yeah. I, I'm going to act like I'm the most interested. I'm going to then become a... made it as a snelly man. There are way worse butt rock bands I, than Nickelback. Oh, I absolutely. will become a Nickelback fan again and talk about what the song Too Bad meant to me on the playground in elementary school. <laughs> it's actually... <laughs> it's too bad. It's too bad. It, this is why I love the Sight and Sound space, too, because we make... We make it okay for people to just like whatever they like. Sure. One of the people, and I think Luke actually represents this really well. Luke is just, he knows that Ryan and I just don't like a lot of the shit that he likes. How you doing? Uh, sure. m- music wise. And and he just doesn't fucking care. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Because I've been there. I've, I've told a story before on the podcast. <laughs> There's still times, there are still times where I will turn off my uh, social media notifications notifications or whatever for Spotify that I don't want people knowing specific things that sure. I listen to. Let me ask you guys a question. Is there anybody like that for you where you would turn off your Spotify so that people wouldn't know what you were listening to? Absolutely. No. What is it? What What is it for you? Because I have a specific answer and it might be uh, I have a specific answer. Go ahead. So if I'm listening to um, so so just hashtag transparency. Yeah. I work for a church in right. St. Louis. And one of my, the things I have to do is we play a song every week that's different, that's new, that tries to like, is a part of our service or whatever. Right. So when I go and I'm looking, some of the, sometimes the songs that I'm looking for are like atrociously bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I know, I know they're not cool, but like whether my boss or whoever has asked me to play it, uh, I'd like to. I like to have a bunch of chips. I like to say yes enough that when I say no, it gets to stay no. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, picking the, your battles. <clears throat> country songs. Okay. Right. Like I like some country music, but there's a lot of trash. Right. You know, for every Chris Stapleton, there's five Florida Georgia lines. Right. Yeah. Um, so if 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 I'm listening to something like that, I'll I'll definitely hide that. If this was like junior year of high school and I'm hanging out with you and you're listening to me without you or whatever, right if if there was a if, if we had Spotify back then, I might hide that I'm listening to Crossfade. <laughs> or looking back at me. I I might hide <laughs> something like that. But nowadays it's like you might see me on Spotify listening to all of that That's shit. Right. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna hate on me and I'm gonna say. It's the music I fucking grew up on. I think I th- it's like I, I'm out of reasons to be sure. self conscious of any kind of music that I want to listen so, to. So for me personally, I think what it has to do with, or, and again, hashtag transparency and speaking openly, th- there's two factors. One is the fact that, why, why are you laughing? Can't we just start? Every single episode of Sight and Sound with hashtag transparency, and then we <laughs> and then we never have to bring it up again. No, it's sort of like a marker, like That's right. being honest here. Uh, so I love. I it. think one, I'm gonna go pee. I can't. No, we're about to take a break here in a second. Just, oh, okay. just hang on. Okay, very um, good. And then it's time for Brando to interview me. I have no idea. Mm. I, how how long do we have you? You have me in okay. all you want. Okay. Baby. Anyways, so uh, I don't know if you can relate to this or not, but the fact that we're both diehard music lovers i mean not that, not, that, not that ryan's not but i'm just saying like <laughs> i think Definitely. i think sometimes i can be afraid that my credibility should sure. be in question especially especially because uh i'm friends with a ton of people who are really fucking judgmental about music oh yeah i know i can rattle well, off and you're probably three off the top of my head right now. You're supposed to be a tastemaker exactly but, for this stuff so if we see that you're listening to i'm trying to get i'm trying to get share rid of it. I'm trying to questions. get rid of it. I, I'm not picking at you. Right. I'm picking at that attitude. Yes. Absolutely. I, I think should. I think that something like Drake would have been enough to make someone not. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you what what it is. I'm going to tell you what the what I hide. I do not like people knowing when I listen to a band that's quote unquote a local band. And the band that I always hide is if Emerosa comes up on my Spotify, I hide it. They're incredible. I think they're fantastic and I think they're great, but there's something 
there's something weird about the fact that I know those guys. Sure, you, yeah. You are in your head there because Absolutely. you're the only person Absolutely. that's aware of that stigma. Absolutely. Because if anyone it's in our all, group, it's all tied back to their stigma back from when yeah. we were. Ha- for anybody that doesn't know, Emerosa is one of the biggest bands to come out of our local scene. That's right, Brando. You were involved with that band? You were not in, really. You were in the early. weren't you in? You helped early start the band, sets? did you not? N- no. Hol- I, I it's not the did. same. So this is. Let me yeah. get this out of the way because Luke Jagger's freaked out. Right. So this is <laughs> this is what happened. See, uh, again, the stigma. <laughs> Luke is a fanboy of Emerosa. Yeah. No, no. Hold on. So I'm not saying. All I'm saying is, I started a band with Baker. Actually, it goes. It, it started in Frankfurt. Co- right. Do you guys know Cody Turner? Yeah, great guy. Who is that guy? He was in. He was in uh, yeah. One Day as a Giant, right? With yeah, toughness? with with toughness. Okay, I can't believe you remember that band name. But yes, um, <laughs> great band. No, toughness, <laughs> great singer, dude. Yeah, Brian didn't play awesome. football like we do. He yeah. doesn't have CT. Okay. He did play football, but anyway, not for, for one so, year. Yeah. So they, uh, uh, Cody was was there, and then basically we all went to college. It was in the summer between high school and college. Right. Well, we go to college, and I get this call from Baker saying. Baker hey, is Jonathan Baker. He was a Jonathan drummer. Baker. He's a fantastic rival sound. Drummer. Yeah, great guy. Um, love you, buddy. I have a best friend tattoo, best friend for life tattoo with that guy, um, which we'll get into another tattoo story in a minute, which he ruined my life. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. What, he, I'll, it's, I'll tell it's it. Good. Okay. It's good. Uh, <laughs> it's good. It's good. So um, anyway, so then I started. The, so Chris Roberts was the first when when Emerosa started. Their name was Corsets or Cages. Emerosa, as you know them. And it had in the band Mike Bryant, uh, Chris Roberts was on vocals, mm-hmm. but for us he played bass. Okay, in, in I the know that. original and Stephen Anderson from I Sleepwalker. I remember Walker him. Yep, play, was the vocalist. Okay, Mike Bryant was still in the band, so it was me, Mike Bryant, Baker. Mike Bryant was also in Gwen Stacy for a period. That's right. Shout out to Patrick. Who Patrick, was, yeah. great band, love Gwen yeah. Stacy. They thanked us in their record in Aww, their well, album, okay. and I was just like. That's probably the, the 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 saddest thing is that's the biggest revival sound claim to fame. I don't. Um, I don't think Go Jerusalem ever got one. No, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. Great band. Um, love Cole. Gosh, that dude's. Yeah, Cole's a great. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, so I started the band. I'm sorry. Uh, started. So I technically I was in a band with Baker, Chris Roberts, and Mike Bryant. Mike Bryant and Chris Roberts went on to be in Emerosa. <laughs> But I had nothing to do. Like, yeah. they broke up and restarted and just chose the name Corsets or Cages again. That's like that's like saying that I was in the band. Dallas with, Taylor has a claim to Under, Under Oath. Oath being in the band. But and they he were does, different. But, it, but yes. That's what I'll you say. You started well, ev- to, to everyone <laughs> no. To everyone here locally, though, they just com- they they drive that bridge over. Like, it, it, Corsets became sure. Amorosa. I just want everyone to know, like, the reason that Emerosa succeeded is because I was not involved. <laughs> like, they are incredible. But, um, the, well, what people need to know, the fascinating thing about this story, and I, I want to have Will uh, on the podcast at some point. I love Will. And he, that band became successful. Like I said, one of the most successful bands still playing today, getting a ton of critical acclaim Their as well. Their last record. I didn't care for it as much. Oh, I thought it was better. But anyways, regardless. Uh, so... That band, even though they were successful, they were the butt of people's jokes in this local sure. scene. People hated that band. They they would always make them play last, and that's not always what you want. That's right. And uh, <laughs> sometimes the headline local shows is not good. Yeah. I mean, I remember being a part of groups that would stand around outside of shows, and it's just, everybody was talking shit about them. And it's just like, yeah, they're laughing at everybody. But it's because now. they were successful. It was, and they they were focused on that's on right. being successful. That's right, and and the, even the Johnny Craig years when he was yeah. their singer, I, that's when they put out their best record. I Relativity. Agree. I think both of those records he was on were, uh, were really good. I, Johnny Craig is a fantastic singer, but he has some demons. Yeah, one hundred percent. So Matt Wilson could tell you all about them, and love he's Matt so transparent. <laughs> uh, transparent about <laughs> it. One day he was uh, on a podcast. One day with a guy from fucking uh, what's that? band that he likes the get up kids he was on the get up kids singers podcast and uh he was just like telling these stories you're kidding (laughs) that were completely unfiltered i was like dude i cannot believe you're telling these stories right now it's fantastic (laughs) it's great matt wilson is a chihuahua only in the fact that he is little 
and he is the most energetic person I've ever met. Matt Wilson has supposed to have been on so many podcasts that we've been involved with and just hasn't happened. Love him. But I see him at the farmer's market. Quite Matt, often. if you listen to this, I love you. He's not. He's not? <laughs> You're not, but I love you. He might be the most successful thing to ever come out of Lexington yeah, Music Yeah, seriously. Scene. Absolutely. Great guy. Let's take a break real Let's quick. Let's do it. Because I have to pee-pee really bad. Same. All right, Same. we'll be right back. 